Recovery Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the last Sunday of the month, which means it's time for the plant-based kitchenista, Chef Kelly Williamson. And she is going to make some amazing dishes like a holiday burger. And she's going to show you at the same time how you can repurpose some of your holiday leftovers. Please welcome her to the show. Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So tell me about your Thanksgiving. Yeah, so we actually had two of them. So um, the granddaughter, so that normally we have it just on you know regular Thanksgiving, but the granddaughter wasn't coming into town because she flew out of town and stuff until Friday. So everybody said, hey, can you wait until Friday to have the with the family? So we actually have a neighbor that is 81, just got over pneumonia. So we invited her over for on Thursday. So we ended up having a roasted head of cauliflower over wild rice that had like mushrooms and roasted red peppers and all that on there. It was just great. And then we had like, we did some sweet potatoes, melting sweet potatoes, and then we did asparagus. So, and a big salad and all those kind of things. And, and she's not normally, she's not, she's not vegan at all, but she's learning. She said, you know, I feel better when I don't eat meat. So she's pretty much given up all meat except for fish. And then now is always like, well, what are you making? So the holiday burgers, the, when we have the, the extras and stuff, I'll be taking them over to her today. So she's learning. She's like, this is kind of fun. I feel better. I have more energy and all those kind of things. And so very curious at, at um, 80 years old when she started getting curious about being plant-based. Oh my God. So that's been fun. Years old. Well, think about it. Even if somebody's not vegan, I always say that except for the Turkey, Thanksgiving is a vegan holiday because exactly. it's served even in the very yeah. first pilgrim Thanksgiving. Yep. It was a bunch of sides. Exactly. And that's my favorite anyway. I mean, who cares about the Turkey and stuff? Let's eat the sides. And Jerry's the same way. He's like, you know, sweet potatoes and stuffing and everything else that's there. That's the best part of it. You know, so Yep. And then, then we had Friday, we had just the normal. So, you know, like the sweet potatoes. So it was kind of like, I made double of both, but I took the normal sides over that you would do like your sweet potatoes, your mashed potatoes, um, did the salad. We did some roasted Brussels sprouts and butternut squash and, and those type of things. So we actually, and then she made the Turkey. So Jerry's daughter's not vegan, but she tries to, you know, she does some things here and there and stuff, but made the Turkey and all that. And then we just had a regular Thanksgiving Friday too. So that was like my fourth Thanksgiving meal, I think, because I've, you know, done a couple of shows. So by the time I hit four, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready for regular food again, you know, not sweet potatoes and things like that. But yeah, Jerry loves it. That's his favorite holiday. We sent home so many uh, leftovers with people and we just finished our leftovers last night. So it'll be fun to learn what I could have done with them. What did you, so what did you make? I made Drina Burton's autumn loaf, but what I do to it yep. is I, Instead of making it in a loaf pan, I made it in a, in a lasagna pan, actually bigger than a lasagna mm -hmm. pan. And then I put a double layer of mashed potatoes on it. So then when I bake it, it's like twice baked mashed potatoes. Yeah. And then on it, we put the gravy and the cranberry sauce. It was really delicious, really delicious. Beautiful. Yeah, I love I love making those. And then sometimes, you know, if you get real fancy, if you know, if you're if you're okay with it and stuff, but like using like a puff pastry or something that around it too, so it makes it really pretty. But that sounds wonderful. It almost sounds like a um, shepherd's pie a little bit. It was, but without the lentils, it was just yeah. so good. And what I love about that recipe and my, it's very similar to my sweet potato burger recipe is there was no like cutting of the onion and sauteing. Like that was, it was just put everything in the food processor or in a bowl, mix it up and bake it. So easy. Nice. Yeah. Cause I had to make every recipe times eight. So I wasn't look. I was looking for easy recipes. No, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, it it's good. nice too. Like you said, when, when you've got, you know, just a little bit that's left over, but not having where you have six days of leftovers, it's nice to have maybe one or two days. Jerry loves that. And then the rest goes with everybody else. It's like, here you go, go enjoy. <laughs> so yep. that's great. Yep. That's so that's, good. You had two Thanksgivings, two Thanksgivings. Yeah. That's so I would say that's actually too much, <laughs> too, too much. <laughs> one I, I think would have been nice. And then just having the relaxation and all that, but it was good. It's always good to be with friends and family. So I know I'm exhausted though from it. I need yeah. a vacation from Thanksgiving. Yeah, it is. It's, it is exhausting because it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of thinking. It's not just much the preparation, but it's the thinking about, you know, how much do I have to have? And like you said, you had to take it times eight. So then you're thinking about, well, do I get enough of this? And is there enough of that for everybody to enjoy? And it's, it's, you know, really planning those kind of things out. And plus then I had to think about, she loves pumpkin pies. I make a deep dish pumpkin pie, but you know, I can't eat and Jerry doesn't eat because it has eggs and, and, you know, milks and all that kind of stuff in it. But that's her favorite. And I, she's like, you can't get in the house unless you bring me two pumpkin pies. And so, you know, the rethinking and 
and rethinking about how do you, do I have eggs? You know, do I have to go buy them? You know, all that. Yeah, kind of stuff. Make non-vegan stuff for somebody. Just tell them it's vegan. Just tell them, you know. I just- know. She knows this pumpkin pie. It is, it's pretty famous around here. The, the pumpkin pie, it was my mom's recipe. And well, I've actually let her make it, it herself. You shouldn't have to <laughs> compromise your values. She's got I to- know, I know, but I, you know, being nice and I make them out every year. So you know, yeah. don't be nice, not nice to the chicken. So you're going to have to stop that right now. Now that we've outed you. Okay. <laughs> got it. So funny. <laughs> Egg does not make a difference in a pie. That recipe can be tweaked. I'm sure. Yeah. That's, that's my next goal is to tweak it and try to figure out like some different things to it. And make it a lot different. So I'm tired of making it. Let's put it that way. So nice. So what what recipes are you going to repurpose today? So holiday burgers. So we're going to make, so the holiday burgers are pretty much, you can put anything that you want, like vegetable wise. So I have green beans, you know, I have your regular, you know, just your carrots and your celery and your onions. And, you know, most of the time you have those around, I have uh, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, cranberries. I actually soak the cranberries. It has a little bit of lentils in them, but if you don't want lentils, you could put in brown rice. Um, truthfully, you probably don't even need the lentils or the brown rice because by the time you put in the the oat flour and the mashed potatoes and everything else, they're going to hold up really well anyway. So you could add, you know, if you had asparagus left over, you could chop up asparagus in it. You could do, you know, anything. And then we're going to put a cranberry sauce on the top because usually everybody has their favorite cranberry sauce. And so we're going to do that. And then it has Brussels sprouts and uh, mushroom gravy on the bottom. So the Brussels sprouts, you know, if you're, cause you're all fans of chef AJ. So if you have your roasted Brussels sprouts, you could do the same thing. You could put a roasted Brussels sprouts, kind of a slaw on the top and then do your mushroom gravy on the bottom. And then you're repurposing everything. And even if you had like um, butternut squash or something like that in your Brussels sprouts, doesn't matter, put it on the burger. And then you end up having like, it's almost like, like I said, a holiday, almost kind of a remembrance of Thanksgiving burger. And you're using all the different ingredients and stuff that you have in your kitchen, which is great. So yeah. And then we're going to go ahead. Sorry. I said, yay. I love it. Yes. Making it easy. And then we're going to do an after holiday salad. So same thing you could actually, you know, cause there's a, there's a lot of recipes out there with like butternut squash and Brussels sprouts, but if you don't want to, you know, make them up and you've made them up the day, you know, a couple of days ago, you could just repurpose them. And actually, especially if they're roasted or, you know, sauteed, whatever you do, just add the dressing to it and add a little bit of this, um, a little bit of this pasta that we're going to put in there. And then you have a salad that goes with it too. So it's easy to do. And it's nice to not have all those Thanksgiving ingredients and holiday ingredients sitting in your refrigerator and going bad. So this is the way to repurpose everything and and have great meals and stuff for the next two or three days. And then you can freeze these burgers too. That's the nice thing about it. Even with the cranberry sauce on top, you can freeze them. And then Jerry loves it because he'll eat them. He'll eat them for probably the next, I don't know, two or three weeks. You know, you'll put some baked fries with them, all those kind of things, and they're great. So I love it. Cranberry sauce on a burger. Who would have thought? Yes. That's the best thing about it, especially when you bake it out and it gets real thick. And then you can always add more to it. But yeah, it's a great way to do cranberry sauce, especially when you, you know, when you make a bunch of cranberry sauce and you have so much left over and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to feel like eating it anymore. Make a burger. That's the way to do it. Yeah. All right. So we ready to get started? Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to get, we're going to get the ingredients cooked up for the holiday burger. Cause I want to be able to get those in the oven. So a little bit of vegetable broth, doesn't matter or water. Just to get things sauteed up. So we're going to do just the regular mirepoix. So we've got the onions. Doesn't matter what onions, it could be white, could be red, yellow, doesn't matter. Carrots shredded. Celery chopped. In there. We're going to make sure that's getting going. So the other ingredients that we're going to be using today, we've got, so we've got mushrooms. So more than likely, you've probably made a mushroom gravy that was over the holidays. So just, you know, leave a couple mushrooms on the side, or even if you saute them up and just had mushrooms on top of like a, a loaf or something like that, you know, just take them because they're already sauteed and then just drop them into the burger because you can go ahead and use them. That's the nice thing about this. Then we've got baby kale. Kale was interesting this week. I went to uh, yesterday and stuff to the store to find kale. No kale anywhere in Colorado. So I don't know if there was a big kale salad holiday don't or we just couldn't get them or something. So I end up getting the little baby kale leaves and there's a little bit of spinach in there too. So 
just strange. You know, I like, I think for people that aren't used to kale, the baby kale is a good option because it's, it's not as bitter. Yeah, I guess it was, like I said, I went through um, two different grocery stores and you know, it was, you know, like regular King Supers, which is like our big Kroger's. And then I went to a Sprouts and stuff and there was no kale. So I just don't know, like I said, I don't know if maybe some, something happened with the crop and they didn't get it in or the truck was late or don't know. And then green beans. So, you know, if you don't, let's just say you didn't do green beans for um, the holidays, you know, or you didn't do a green bean casserole or something like that. You can just, you know, you can either get the green beans and saute them up, or you could use asparagus, or if you've got, you know, extra Brussels sprouts or anything like that, put those in. doesn't really matter. Broccoli is another one that you could just chop up really small. And that makes it good. But since I had green beans left over, I just chopped them up really small. So those are ready to go. If you're, uh, of course, if your uh, vegetable broth starts kind of uh, disappearing, just add a little bit more. And you want to actually just mix this up. So just the regular carrots and celery and onions, you want to mix it up until your, your uh, onions get a little bit translucent. And then they're ready to go. And let's just say you don't want carrots because you're like, you want to have to grate carrots. You know, you can buy them grated, but if you don't want to, leave them out. These are the, this is kind of like the base of the holiday burger, but you could add or subtract anything that you want to do. All right, so now we're going to add the mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. Doesn't matter, whatever's your favorite mushroom that you have. I also freeze a lot of my mushrooms. So if you end up getting too many mushrooms, always know you can freeze them. They're not good, of course, in a salad or something like that, but they're really good if you're making a, like a sauce, like a spaghetti sauce, or we did the other night, we did um, sauteed up a whole bunch of vegetables, like anything I could find in the refrigerator. And then we put, uh, we did a, a homemade marinara sauce on it. And then I spiralized a bunch of zucchinis. Um, so we had the zucchini noodles. That was delicious. Yeah. Fast, easy. I want you to be my neighbor. The what? I want you to be my neighbor. <laughs> then you could just come over. It was like, we made a lot. It was a lot of food, but Jerry ate it for a couple of days of lunch and happy with it and everything was good. And if you don't like mushrooms, so I know there's people out there much that don't like mushrooms. I'm one. I'm not a big mushroom fan. So if you don't like them, I would chop them up really. And so do, instead of doing slices, because you are going to see the slices when you make the burger. But if you don't like the mushrooms, then chop them up really small or put them in a food processor and just kind of like pull some just a few minutes and stuff. And then when you mix them in and you get everything else mixed in, you're not going to see the mushrooms and they'll give you that texture. If you absolutely hate mushrooms, I can eat them if they're mixed up in things. Um, but if you hate mushrooms, leave them out. Don't have to do that. You could always substitute in if you had eggplant or something like that too. But it's not something you have to have. Okay, so that's what's looking like so far. Kind of looks like you're making a marinara type of a marinara sauce. All right, so then we're going to put in the kale. So like I said, it was a little bit of kale, baby kale leaves, and just a little bit of spinach. I just pulled it out. You could add in, you know, whatever your favorite greens are. So if you've got collard greens, maybe you made those for the holiday, add them in. Great way to get rid of if you've got a bunch of spinach. Great way to do that too. Already pretty. All the colors. Smells good. All right. So we've got those in there. So I'm just making sure we've got everything. So we've got the kale, the onions, the mushrooms. So we get the thyme and oregano. It's a little bit of thyme, a little bit of oregano. That gives you some of the holiday spices. You could also add in the poultry spice. It's, um, I had somebody ask me, no, it's not poultry. It's just spices. So it's like your, sometimes like your rosemary, your sage and all that. It's really good. It's usually what a lot of people put in stuffing. So you could add that in. You could also, and I don't have it on this one, but if you had a little bit of stuffing left over, you could put it in here too. Oh my gosh. So why not? It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's a more of a bread type of ingredient. So it's going to hold everything together. So you can get that too. 
Um, and you could also make little, um, another way you could do this too, is you could make stuffing patties. So you could just put, you know, patty together your stuffing, put them in the oven, get them nice and crispy, and then put your burger on top and the mushroom gravy and the the, 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 the Brussels sprouts. There's all kinds of things you could do with this. All right, so we've got everything in there. I'm just gonna add the green beans just to get them warm. Just give it a couple, couple of stirs. And then we're gonna put everything together in a bowl. All right. How did you think of this burger? Had you ever had a burger with cranberry sauce on it? There is the way, the reason why I thought about it is that, so this is like way, 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 way back. So like Red Robin has like a turkey burger and it's always kind of remind me like their spices. And this is, this is probably what, 20 years ago. Um, they had a, a, like the spice and stuff kind of reminded me of Thanksgiving. And I was like, okay, how can I repurpose a lot of things that we have here and make it more like Thanksgiving, but not so not just have it like one day, but be able to put it in the freezer and have it for multiple days. And so, like I said, every time I make this, I'll be like, oh, I don't have any uh, sweet potatoes or something because Jerry ate all the sweet potatoes or something like that. So I'll, I'll add, be like, okay, what else do I have in the refrigerator that I had for the holidays? And then I'll mix all this up. And then I put them in, you know, little patty things and make them and put them in the freezer. He loves burgers. Jerry does. So we all know Jerry's spoiled. <laughs> So he loves what, burgers. What does he, what does he use in buns? Have you tried those new pacha buns that are just made out of buckwheat water and salt? Yes. Did you try that buckwheat, the buckwheat bread? bread like yeah. <clears throat> yep. He did. And he liked it. He said it was really good. I, I had one slice of it and then have a rest. I don't eat. Like if I do like a burger or something, sometimes a lot of times I'll just do like with lettuce or something like that, or I'll just do it you know, just on the plate. I don't eat a lot of bread, but he likes the bread. So he likes the the buckwheat or all those kind of different breads that are out there. So, all right. So we've got, so I'm going to do all the saute vegetables. Just get those in a bowl. All right. So you can see like the mush. So if you don't like mushrooms, like I said, you can just, you know, just take your spoon and just kind of chop them up a little bit but, or chop them up before you do, but you can barely see the mushrooms in there. And if there is a little bit of moisture, you should be okay. Um, you could always, you know, soak it up if you wanted to, but you're going to add in like the oat flour and a bunch of other things. They're going to help make sure everything all mixes together. All right. So let's start adding the ingredients. So we've got lentils. So the lentils, just regular green lentils, whatever lentils, doesn't matter, whatever, whatever you have. Um, you just want to keep cooking them. So instead of like when they're ready to eat and they're kind of al dente and they're really good, you want to overcook them. That way, when you're when you're actually uh, mixing up this burger, they mix in really well. So, so I'm adding a cup. So I didn't have a big enough little bowl. So adding the two little things there. Mix those in. Let's do cranberries. I soak the cranberries just a little bit. Um, the brand that I bought was they're the really like really kind of hard and chewy. So I thought, especially since they're going into burgers and it's almost like raisins when you put them into cookies, adding a little bit of water and letting them soak for a little while makes keep some that moisture in them. So that's all I did is just add a little water and let them soak overnight. You don't like cranberries? You can leave them out. Oh, but then you gotta have cranberries and that relish, right? You should, but if you don't like them, some people don't like cranberries, so it's okay. Just leave them out. You could always substitute in like little chopped up, um, a lot of times and stuff, like if you're doing stuffings, you could have uh, chopped up apples. So you could add some apples in it to make it a little bit different too. So sweet potatoes, these were just sauteed in water. And then um, that was it. So pretty much on the stove, sauteed them in water. And then those are ready to go. Jerry's favorite mashed potatoes made with soy milk. I'm going to get my hands in here in a minute because that's the fun part. It's already pretty. Almost looks like a casserole without anything else added to it. Then we've got flaxseed, which of course is going to be some of your binder. And flaxseed is really good for you anyway. Some nutritional yeast. 
you know, I've never had to put a binder in my burgers because they always have something like oats or rice or both that just mm -hmm. seems to bind them, you know? Yep. You could do it either way. So, you know, if you've got enough, so let's just say that you're making it up and you leave the flaxseed towards the end and your your burgers and stuff are holding together well enough because you've got the, the oat flour or that kind of stuff, you can leave the flaxseed out. Jerry loves flaxseed, so we put flaxseed in a lot of different things. All right, a little bit of walnuts. You don't have to put the walnuts in or pecans. You could leave those out. Garlic. You could saute up your garlic if you wanted to in there too, but since we're baking it up, not a big deal. Oat flour, you can buy oat flour or you can just take your regular rolled oats, put them in, the, put them in a food processor or your um, blender and then you can just blend them up. So I'm gonna add some because I'm just gonna see how much we need. And then for freshness, you could either do capers or just lemon juice. I didn't have any capers, so lemon juice. Sometimes capers are a little too briny for me, so lemon juice works really well. All right, let's get some gloves on, then we're going to get these in the oven. So one of the things, once you make these up, but since everything's pretty much cold, um, except for the hot vegetables and stuff I just did, then usually put them in the, you'll put them in the refrigerator, just this bowl, refrigerator for about 20 minutes, but... We're going to get things going, All right? So this is the fun part. So if you didn't want to make this as like burgers, you could also make this um, like, like um, Chef AJ, you were talking about make it into like a loaf. Well, you that's that what too. I do because I find that's what I do. Cause I, I do my smoky sweet potato burgers. That's my staple go-to. And while it's easy to make the burgers and I got to form them and then I got to flip them. So what I've been doing lately is just putting them in a silicone pan, a nine by nine, and it makes a, like nine perfect squares. And so my burgers square instead of round, but Hey, it's so what it's, it's just a lot easier after you do have to cook it longer that way, you know? Yeah, it's exactly. I was actually on, um, so QVC was over the, over the weekend stuff was had the, um, silicone baking, the, the, uh, cupcake baking things, but theirs were not metal around the edges. They were all silicone and they oh. were talking about, they were selling them, um, I can't remember the brand of them, but stuff, but they were selling them because they were like, oh, you know, you need to have these because you don't have to use that spray anymore. And, you know, they just popped out. And so this, this guy, the, the chef was like really selling them. It was funny, but I was like, oh, those are pretty. I'll have to get some of those. But I remember mm -hmm. yours from, from Mexico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what it looks like. All ready to go. So then you grab a baking sheet, parchment paper, and there's two ways you can do them. You can just hand form them if you want, or if you have these little rings, then you can also use the rings. So grab, it's probably a little over half a cup, maybe about three quarters of a cup. And the rings are fun because they keep the edges all nice and round and smooth. So just pat that in there. Voila. There's a burger, but they're also pretty if you just do them by hand. Ooh, yours are beautiful. Yours are perfect. Uh huh. These little rings and stuff you can get them on Amazon. Um, a little bit more. I'm a little bit jealous on that one, but um, they're on Amazon, I think they're like ten dollars for a whole set of rings. And they're kind of fun. Let's do a couple more. Just do one more, and then I'll bake the rest and uh, head them. I'll hand them down to my or head down and. Hand them to my neighbor, the 81 year old lady that we want to try these. There we go. Probably going to make, so it usually says 46 burgers. Depending on how big you make them, they could actually be, um, they could be, you know, you could have, if you make them thinner than this, because you'd like, you'd like the thin burgers first, then you could actually probably get eight to 10. So or you can like double, triple this recipe and then really freeze them out, which is really nice. So we're not going to add, we're not going to add any of the, um, the cranberry sauce and stuff yet because we want to bake them for a little bit. And then once they are probably about eight to 10 minutes away from pulling them out of the oven, we're going to add the cranberry sauce. This is one, and I didn't make this one. So I'm going to wholeheartedly admit, uh, admit it, 
this was done um, for the for the Thanksgiving that we had on Friday. Linda, who is a good friend of ours and stuff, makes cranberry sauce and she makes it really good. She's got like um, little oranges, cutie oranges in it and stuff. Just really good. And so she gave me a bunch of it and I was like, yay, guess what I'm making? So these are pretty, ready to go. Look very yeah. pretty, very festive. Very professional looking. Yeah. We're going to go in the oven. So 400 degree oven. We're going to let those go. Then we're going to get the salad made. So after the holiday salad, we'll get that made. And then I'm going to make, well, let me actually go ahead and do the Brussels sprouts. Let's get the Brussels sprouts going. Lots of Brussels sprouts. All right, just a little bit of vegetable broth or water, doesn't matter. So we're going to have, so if we make it, then so it's all, all together. So Brussels sprouts, we're going to put in um, shredded Brussels sprouts. All I did was just chop them up really finely. So they're almost like a slaw, which is really good. If you don't have Brussels sprouts, you could also do like red cabbage and green cabbage. For some reason, you know, you made these wonderful Brussels sprouts and everybody ate them. You could do that. But otherwise, Brussels sprouts, plentiful in the grocery stores right now. They're everywhere. So I'm just going to add in the garlic. If you don't like garlic, garlic's not your friend. Leave it out. Don't need it. That's bubbling up. How much time do you spend in food prep on a daily basis? Or do you do most of it in advance? Because you you work, people may realize you're like a full-time like job job, you know? Can be. Since this is on, can you help repeat questions or anything like that to me for me, Jerry? So it's cooking yeah i would say you know the brussels sprouts you know i bought i bought them and stuff so these probably took about five eight minutes but you can also buy shredded brussels sprouts so you know they have them in the stores now in the packets and stuff so you don't even have to you know worry about um shred them up you could also do them on a mandolin but watch your fingers because mandolins are or a type of thing you could always you know pulse it up put it into a, a food processor so you're not cutting up but this one, the nice thing about this, even though that there's quite a few different pieces and parts of it, um, it's, like I said, it's one of those, everything that you have in the refrigerator, as long as you have like your, you know, your binders and things like that, everything that's in the refrigerator can go on these burgers and make them, that's, that's the easy thing about it. But I know that's the, that's the one thing that I think keeps everybody from cooking a lot is chopping. So, but if you go, you know, like the sprouts or the, you know, the Whole Foods or any of those kind of stores like that. Trader Joe's is a really good one. They all have things that are already chopped up, onions, carrots, celery, all those kind of things. So you could just buy them and bring them home and make things up. Or you could live next door to somebody like me or Chef AJ, and then you've got, <laughs> you've got food, like our neighbor. Did you Family hear my need. question before about how much time you spend daily on food prep? Because you have a real how much time job. Daily. So I've cooked this entire week. So this is a good week to, so I would say probably, but I'm fast. So I would say 15, 20 minutes that I'm doing prep. So like if I'm making tostados or something like that, it's cutting up the tomatoes and the lettuce and all those kind of things. I would say if you have something that's like this, so it's like bigger recipes and more steps, you're probably 30, 45 minutes and that's me. So I would say if you don't, don't count my time, but just like normal chopping time, you're probably about 30 minutes on a regular day-to-day -day basis and probably an hour, hour and 15 minutes if you chop everything else from scratch, if you're going to, if you're doing it on your own, that's what I would say. I enjoy it. I'm, it's kind of, um, I would say there's days, you know, that you get tired because you're just like, I, you know, I've worked all day and, and I just, you know, I'm not ready to, to chop a bunch of things, but most of the times and stuff when I'm just sitting here and I can just kind of like get into it and just, it just kind of like everything else clears off. Like my brain stops thinking and all that, because I know of all the things that I have to just get ready. So it's like chop, you know, chop the onions, chop the tomatoes, chop the, the lettuce and all those kind of things. Calms me down, which is nice. Or I could do the little things behind my ears. I was at a, um, we have a, we have a go live that's, that's going live here soon. And they were practicing 
it's all about um, behavioral health. And they were practicing how to, you know, how to calm people down and like health and wellness and things like that for people that are, you know, suffering with, you know, alcohol, you know, behavioral health issues and all those kind of things. And so all the, the, the women that were in there, all these uh, case managers were practicing doing um, acupuncture and they were doing it in the ear. So like the ear points and it's for like, you know, and then you're supposed to like meditate with it. So they were like, well, you know, we need 40 people and we were all there training and everything. And they're like, we need 40 people. So can you come in and try it a couple of times and stuff? So they had all these little needles in your ears. There's like 10 or 15 needles and to calm down. And then they put these little, um, what do they call them? Like ear, ear beads. And they put those on your ears. And so if you get, you know, if you're like anxious or something like that, you can actually just press on the little beads and they stay on your ears for about, I don't know, three or four, three or four weeks, depending on how much you touch your ears and stuff, but three or four weeks and you can just like put the pressure on them. And, but it was, it was interesting to try that and, and for them to ask to experiment, experiment on us. Kind of fun. All right. What so is nice. your what is your day job? My day job is I work for a large healthcare system and I am the director of IT. So I manage all the training. So I've got about a hundred and I think 25 employees now that I they I'm responsible for training, support, efficiencies, et cetera, on electronic medical record system. So epic. So all the docs, nurses. Anybody in the hospital, we're responsible for making sure they're ready to go. And our hospital, just like all hospitals that you guys are seeing out there, is merging, acquiring, building, partnering. And so it's like we're in a constant go life state all the time. Sauteed Brussels sprouts, that's going to be the slaw on top. You could always add, you know, roasted red peppers, whatever, you know, there's other flavors that you want. I don't think I'll make the gravy yet. All right, so then let's grab for the salad. Put that over there. Brussels smouts, smouts, <laughs> sprouts smell really good. All right, so we're gonna do butternut squash. This is for the salads. So this is after the holiday salad. Like I was talking about, if you didn't want to saute this up and you already had butternut squash, um, or you had you know Brussels sprouts, you could make this salad up without even do anything with it. You just make the dressing and it's ready to go. Nice thing about butternut squash, because I know a lot of people are like, don't want to use it. Don't want to have to cut it up. They now have it where it's all cut up into little boxes. So feel free to grab the, the cut up Brussels sprouts. All right. So I'm just going to saute those a little bit. I love butternut squash. We made um, earlier last week, I think it was, yeah, last week we made um, lasagna spaghetti squash. And so like when all the squashes are plentiful and they're, they're not so expensive because it's, you know, this time of the year when they're coming out, they were really, really good. They are, um, we just took the spaghetti squash and we baked it, you know, cut it in half, baked it in the oven and then scraped all the, the spaghetti squash out of it and then left the shell. And then I made like a homemade marinara sauce and then a tofu ricotta and mixed all that up together with uh, spinach. And you could add, you know, what other, other ingredients you want. And then you put a little bit of dollop of the ricotta, put it back in the oven and let it bake for just a little bit. Oh my gosh. All right, our neighbor, the the 81 year old lady hadn't tried it before. So we made, I made her a, a whole one, but it's like two halves. And then our neighbor whose wife was out of town and stuff, I made him, he's not, and he's like, well, what is this? And he's like, I've never had spaghetti squash before and all that. And I was like, okay. So I explained what it was. And I said, you know, don't eat the, the base of it. Cause that's just the container that's holding it. And he's like, I ate that for three days. He said, that was the best thing. He said, I need the recipe, which was really nice. Now we have one, let me show you one left over. Ooh, heavy. Doesn't look as pretty now because it's been in the fridge, but that's the spaghetti squash. So it's all spaghetti squash and marinara and ricotta. It's really good. That still looks good to me. It's oh, it's delicious. It's like eating it's like eating a spaghetti without without all the noodles. Gary will eat one of those, the whole one, like that, and a big salad. That's his favorite. So 
So butternut squash, you just want to saute it until it actually starts getting a little bit like, not really like mushy. You don't want it mushy, but more like al dente. And you can tell I actually took, you know, even though it was chunks, I, around, I cut it down to really thin slices. Because even though that they, you put them in those little containers and stuff, they give you really big chunks and the chunks are kind of like all different sizes. So it's kind of nice to have them where they're more like mouth size. So I just cut them down. Oh, uh, Ke too. Kelly, there's a question from Mona. Are any of the recipes in your book and have you come out with a second book yet? <laughs> I have got to do this. I think, you know, I was thinking about the other day and I was thinking about this and stuff that writing a whole book, because I know you're doing it right now because you've got your your dessert book that's mm -hmm. going to be phenomenal that's coming out. It's a lot of work to do them. So I was thinking about, um, and you can give me your opinion. I was thinking about making like eBooks and making them like smaller, like, so you could have like, you know, the, the burgers and then, then, you know, breaking them up that way. What's your thoughts on that to be able to get it done? Because having the time right now with work yeah, and everything else. I know what get... you mean. It, 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 eBooks are definitely, um, you know, there, there, you know, there's pros and cons, you know, you, you don't have an ebook in Barnes and Noble, obviously, but it's, it, you can get the information out quicker for sure. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about doing. Cause I have, and thank you, Mona. I love you, Mona. Um, have lots and lots of recipes, but it's like they're putting it all together and then, you know, finding the publisher and oh, getting all those wait a minute. Done. We've got the bundle coming out next year. That could be a great offering for our bundle. That's true. That is true because oh. that's what we're going to, because we're going to be working on that over the holidays. Yeah. So then I'll vote for that. And that doesn't mean you still can't have a hard book, even if you do ebook, you know? Yeah, that's true. But I think, yeah, this one, the holiday burgers are not in the cookbook because um, it's been about what, four or five years since I did the cookbook. But it's it's inspired me like because definitely I could get I have the time and stuff to be able to get the ebooks done, and then then I could work on in between that getting one big book. Do it. Yep. Yeah, we do have like all the so all the recipes that I've been doing too are all on the you so on my YouTube channel. So a plant based kitchenista. But I know everybody likes to. Yeah, but I know everybody really likes to have, you know, like if you're you're cooking and stuff, you want to have the cookbook in front of you and, you know, be able to have a little sticky notes and mark everything down. So I need to start, like I said, I will start working on the eBooks because I think that is something, at least the main ones I want to get accomplished to get accomplished a lot faster. I just need to take like, I have 400 and, 460 hours of PTO. I just need to take it like through February or something. To get them wow. done. Oh, that's amazing. Well, do it. Why don't you come up here and then you can do, do like a little writer's retreat and then you can cook all my meals while you that would be fun. <laughs> I'll pay for your plane fare. You can or I could do like you did because that one time didn't you go to didn't you go to Rancho La Porta and, and write yep. a book? I spent the, except for when I was teaching my class, I spent the entire time in my room. Yeah. The only way I can get it done sometimes. It's so hard at home because when you have a Havanese dog, you know, they just require every moment of your time. Yeah, I need to need to just, you know, sit down and just, you know, like in between and or block off an hour here, an hour there. I work enough as it is, so an hour here, hour there is not gonna nobody will notice. Just kind of taste it, see what, you know, just try a little piece of it. A little more. But I know squash is really good. And it's another one um, that, you know, you don't need, like a lot of people will say, oh, I've got to put, like, okay, well, I'll go this way. We, when we go to restaurants and we've got a restaurant that we go to and they have veggie burgers and they have um, like baked potatoes, really great baked potatoes and asparagus and all those kind of things, no oil. They're really nice to us. But they always do things on their on their menu. It'd be like, oh, spaghetti squash. And then they put, you know, Parmesan cheese and all that. And I'm like, you don't have to do all those kind of things. We keep talking to the, you know, the expediter and the chef and and those type of things. But, you know, they're a restaurant and they got to kind of follow recipes. But then they also have like acorn squash, which is really sweet on its own, just like butternut squash. And of course, the first thing they put on it is sugar, um, brown sugar. Yeah. yeah. All over the place. And I'm just like, can I, you know, I'm always like, can I get one just, just you know, like a spaghetti squash without that and they're like, no, it's all mixed in together. I'm like, okay. yeah, most people can't eat food without sugar, fat, and salt added, you know? Acorn squash and pretty much any squash doesn't need sugar. Sweet potatoes doesn't need sugar. I mean, it's, it's, everything is so sweet. And Jerry talks about, you know, he's a, we eat a plain baked potato and sometimes he'll put on, he'll put on, um, 
like a salsa or something like that. But he's like, it tastes sweet, just baked without adding anything else to it. I mean, delicata squash, those rings they sell at Trader Joe's are awesome. They taste like candy. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I love this time of year because yeah. I love winter squash more than anything other than sweet yeah. potatoes. But you know, restaurants, you know how they are. It's like, well, everybody's like, oh, I got to get the acorn squash or I got to get the sweet potatoes with, you know, the brown sugar and all the other, you know, stuff that they put on the butter and all those kind of things. One more little taste. Almost there. And then we're going to do some more Brussels sprouts. So it is a big Brussels sprouts day at the Williamson house. <laughs> <laughs> Charles will not eat Brussels sprouts. Um, he doesn't? Nope. Roberta, her YouTube channel, the link is in the show notes. Show notes are something you can only see if you're watching on YouTube. Um, just so you know, Facebook viewers, I can't see your comments until after the show because I would have to exit this screen. So if you're watching on Facebook, please consider watching on YouTube so you can participate in this very active chat that we have called our Zoomunity. And that's where you can also ask questions of the guests. And many times it's doctors. So what is the name of your YouTube channel? We have the link in the show notes. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the chat as well. You want to look it up real quick here? Because you have. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. It's called Plant Based Kitchenista. Mm -hmm. And I am putting the link also in the chat, but it is in the show notes with the recipe. Lots of recipes up there. Lots and lots. There we go. Yeah. So, same thing, Brussels sprouts. I'm just going to put those in some, just going to saute them up because I already pulled the butternut squash off to the side. I'll just let those saute. And I did, instead of like shredding them, but you could do the same thing. I actually did these in quarters. So if it was a really large Brussels sprout, um, and these were like this time of year and stuff, like probably two weeks ago, the Brussels sprouts weren't good, but these were beautiful. So, you know, depending on if it's a really big, it was like this big Brussels sprout, then I'll cut them up in thirds, but just enough and stuff that where you, you know, that it's not like you're like, if you're grabbing a, a fork of them, that it's like too much in your mouth. So we're just gonna let those saute up. Then we're going to make the dressing. So let me grab a little bowl. So the dressing is more of like a citrus dressing, which is really good. So especially when you, you know, you put it over like Brussels sprouts and butternut squash, a citrus flavors and stuff really brings out even more of the sweetness and the, and the, the yumminess of those two. So we're going to do, so if you're following along, we've got a little bit of the vegetable broth. You can use just water. So quarter cup. Then we have apple cider vinegar. So two tea, two tablespoons. And then we've got stone ground mustard. Trader Joe's has a really good one. So this one's actually a stone ground mustard from Trader Joe's, especially if you're looking for the, the, the no salt, low salt. It's really good with that one. Do you know there's one uh, new, I don't know if it's new, but it's new to me at Whole Foods called Organicville. That's a salt-free mustard because I heard they discontinued the West Bray. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's all kinds of really good like mustards. I mean, everything's changed in the last like probably five, six years of being able to find things and stuff that are, that are really good and tasty and you don't have to worry about the salt and all the, the bad things. I'm actually going today to um, Savory Spice. So Savory Spice is a, a spice place here in town that they they ground all the spices here in Colorado. I know, I know you use like the boss, um, that wasn't the Savory, you use somebody else, but they actually are offering for Black Friday. If you buy a hundred dollars worth of spices, which is a lot of spices, but I use a lot of spices, you get a hundred dollars free. So today's the last day. So I'm like, oh, okay. oh, wait, how much do you have to, to get to get $100 free? How much? What was it? How much do you have to buy to get $100 free? $100. So if you buy $100 worth, what's easy for me to do, because I buy, um, I'll buy like packs like this. So it's like, this is the Greek oregano, but I'll buy packs sometimes like of the cinnamon, like four cups. And so easily that it, it'll add up. So I've got a, a list of probably... 15 spices that I want to get, which will add to the hundred dollars. And then I get to pick whatever I want for the other hundred dollars. To me, that's a great deal because, you know, spices, I could easily go into a spice store and be $200 even with a discount because they'll give chefs discount. And it's, I'm like, okay, that's a lot of, that's a lot of spices, but it's expensive. All right. So I just put in um, a little bit of maple syrup too. So a tablespoon of maple syrup. So just mix that in. Orange, 
So I'm gonna do a little zest first. Sauteing up those Brussels sprouts. Don't overcook your Brussels sprouts. I know Chef AJ will tell you that too, because if you do, then they turn, they go from a bright, vibrant green to kind of a, I don't know, like a fall grass green, which is not as pretty, so. Okay, so just a little bit, I'm gonna do some zest of the orange, because you definitely want to make sure you get that, that citrus. Do you go to the movies, Kelly? The movies? Yes. We actually like went, we went to see what happens later. Oh my God. How was that? It was actually very good. It's, I mean, it's pretty much Meg Ryan and um, David Duchovny the entire time. Was, but... it, was it funny though? I, I, I couldn't tell from the preview. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was funny. It's, it's one of those ones that, that, I mean, they're great. You know, both of them are great, you know, actors and actresses. And it was all, and it was actually done by, she was the director. I think director, producer, Meg Ryan was. And so very much, you know, in an airport setting, I'm not going to, I won't give it away, but an airport setting. And it's all about the relationship of the two of them. Like their, you know, their lives 20 years later, but fun to watch and fun to see, you know, because Meg Ryan hasn't been out there for a while. So it's fun to see her back and she's, you know, her normal kind of kooky self and um, that type of a thing. So she had a rain stick which is kind of like her, her way of doing things and stuff, but it was, it was really cute. I liked it. Wasn't much to pick from. Cause it was like, you know, the, I, I mean, I like the hunger games, but Jerry doesn't like hunger games. And then there was the, the one where who killed something bloom. We, we wow. saw two great movies back to back. One is called the holdovers with Paul Giamatti. I think he's going to get nominated for an Oscar. It was amazing. And then we saw one the other night called next goal wins. That was the feel good hit of the year. Ah, not, I have not seen either one or even seen those advertised here. Here it's all, you know, like when the movies and stuff, very mainstream of what's out there. Hmm. All right. So the, Brussels sprouts are going, so now I'm going to add the pecans. You don't have to add pecans if you don't want to, but just more to heat them up. This is a salad that you can do warm, just like because it's going to be warm and stuff by, by lunchtime for, for Jerry and I. So you can do it warm or you could just let it go, you know, put it back in the fridge and let it get cold either way. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the cranberries. So you can see some similarities between the two recipes. Same thing if you don't want the chewiness of the cranberries, you know, because a lot of times they chew and they stick to your teeth and things, just soak them a little bit. It's so hard to find dried cranberries that don't have oil. Oil or lots of sugar. That's mm -hmm. the other the other thing that you have to watch for. So I usually get, I usually go to, um, when I get them, I go to Sprouts or Whole Foods and I look in the, like their bins or or the different, you know, the different places stuff you can buy them. But they're, yeah, I agree. They're not easy to do. The other thing I did because cranberry, like frozen or regular cranberries, fresh cranberries are hard to find, like around the, you know, the other part of the season stuff. So I actually bought two bags and stuff this, this year and I put them in the freezer so I can have cranberry sauce when I want to. Okay. So all pretty, ready to go. Dump that in. Here we've got lots of dishes. So I added a little bit of the orange juice in there. So I'm going to taste it really quick. And then I'm going to check the burgers. It's good. It's got, um, you get a little bit of that mustard. So you get a little bit of that kind of that tang of the mustard. And you've got the sweetness of the orange. And you've got um, a little bit of the maple syrup that's that's sweet. And that's so, but really good. So the pasta, probably many, how many times have you guys walked by? A Cine de Pepe. So this is this is just a pasta that is um, like little tiny round balls. It's almost like a millet, that but it puffs up, and it puffs up to where it looks more like an orzo or something like that. It takes about nine ten minutes and stuff to cook. But it's kind of a nice pasta. So when you, if you want, you know, if you're making something that has some pasta in it, but you don't want a lot of pasta because I'm not a big like a macaroni salad or anything like that. But just having a little bit of this and stuff is actually really good. And it soaks up. The nice thing about it, it soaks up the um, the dressing really well. And it's just pretty. Suzanne will be getting 
some of the salad also. <laughs> and she's there's... lucky. She's lucky. She's actually asked me to cook for her. So we're talking about what what that would look like. It's more, I think, that um, just with my time and things, I'm thinking that, well, like when I get ready to make something, so like when I make the spaghetti squash or those type of things, then that's, you know, she'll get those those type of things, the burgers and so easy things. Well, why don't you just quit your job and just do like a permanent kind of? I thought about it. We're thinking about, um, there is a gentleman that um, we've been watching. She's, he's got a little Maltese. We've been watching his dog because they, they're both been um, kind of out of town a lot. And so one of the things that he's talking about in two years, he's going to retire out, but he's a really good like handyman and all that. So we've been talking about because we're in a 55 plus area and there's like no services. There's, you know, the, the closest grocery store is Target, which is probably, I don't know, four or five miles away. So it's like all these things that, that people that are, you know, not everybody's 55. A lot of people are 80s and widows and things. So we're thinking about looking at like between him and I maybe starting and maybe one of our neighbors too, starting some kind of a business where in like a couple of years where we could actually get, you know, they can get like this um, snow shoveling because we have, you know, it's Colorado and, you know, all those kind of things like that, that people just can't do. So it's a lot of things that I do for my, for uh, Suzanne, my, my neighbor, I go down and I weed and I, you know, cut down bushes. And how do you have time to do any of this? I just do it. I just, you know, on right after I got done with uh, Thanksgiving on Thursday, she's like, oh, I can't get my Christmas tree set up because it, you know, it has to screw base and couldn't get it done. So I was like, all right. So I went down and that's what I do. Come back later. All right. So everything's mixed together. Let me just pour the dressing on. And then the burgers are going to be ready. Get the burgers out. Oh, they're looking great. And they smell wonderful. It smells like Thanksgiving all over. Oh my God, so, they look beautiful. But I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the cranberry sauce on them really quick. And sometimes I'll make them and then Jerry's like, you know, no cranberry sauce on half and cranberry sauce on half. So you can do that also and then still freeze them up. And I'm like, why not cranberry sauce? He's not a big fan of. Yeah. All right. So they're going to go back in the oven for just a few minutes. Get this all nice and warmed up. But isn't that pretty already? Then we're going to make the mushroom gravy. Phew, hot. Okay. So there is my holiday salad after the holiday salad. So it's got, it's got a little bit of your pasta in there. You've got your um, butternut squash, your Brussels sprouts. You've got uh, a little bit of pecans and cranberries. And then you've got this nice citrus dressing. So it's not, it's what's nice about it. It's not, it's like refreshing and not a heavy salad at all, which is really good, but very, uh, very healthy. That's good. Okay. Bowl. And then we're going to get the mushroom uh, gravy going. So I would guarantee if you even, if you did this during the holidays for the salad and you could always put, you know, add some arugula, add some of your favorite greens to it. This would have gotten eaten. Absolutely. No problem. Yum. It's like you're having Thanksgiving all over again. Uh-huh. But a little bit different flavors, which is kind of nice. Actually, let me just. How do you freeze your burgers? Or how do you freeze anything in that for that matter? The burgers and stuff. So what I do is I sh I'll show you what I do. I grab it really quick. To grab all the ingredient things. So I bought, so you know, you can do it just like the regular way that I just showed you and then freeze them up that way. So what I usually do is I'll put these little, it's kind of like a, like saran wrap type of things in between them. So once I, I'll put like a burger and then I'll put this and the burger and then I'll, you know, just lay them in a, a regular, like a, a Ziploc bag and then put them in the freezer. And these, it's nice about these, if you, especially if your, your burgers are a little sticky, that they don't stick together. The other way I do it is I use 
what they call like a regular hamburger press. These are like, I don't know, 10 bucks on Amazon. And so I'll put the, um, the actual, the, so they got the right ones. I'll show you one that I just do. Do what? Why do they call it hamburger? It's not made out of ham. I don't know. I don't know why they do that either. Okay, so I'll just grab. Put that in there like that. Grab some of the burger. Three quarters cup, give or take. Depending on how big or how thick you want them. Like that. And... And if I'm making up like a whole bunch of black bean burgers, I do that with, um, and I've got like a, a barbecue sauce and all this kind of things. Some of Jerry's, some of Jerry's favorite. I'll actually use this just because it's faster. Then on top, take the little lid, press down, little slide, like that. And you can keep reusing that. The bottom pops out. And there's like a little perfect burger too. So I'll do that all the time too. So depending if I'm making up like, I don't know, 30, 40 burgers like that, then I'll use this. I'll use this as a press. Easy, fast, and they're all uniform, which is really nice. Then I just take, so I don't use these, reuse these papers, but I'll just take these same papers that I have there that you can get on Amazon. I'll just put the papers in between, put them on a, a Ziploc bag and I'll put them like two high, maybe sometimes three high, depending on how thick your burgers are. And then I'll put it on a, a shelf in the freezer so that they get all nice and frozen. And then I'll bring it into our inside freezer and stuff. And then Jerry just helps himself to a burger each time. Loves it. So same thing with these. And so even though they have the cranberry sauce on them, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll put the same thing. I'll put the little, these little paper things on top so that even if there's some stickiness of the cranberry sauce, then no matter what and stuff, it'll still, it'd still be good. Rich is saying they're called hamburgers because they were invented in Hamburg, Germany. Is that true? I don't know. We'll have to look it up. Okay, let me put this back over here. I'm going to get the dress or the mushroom gravy going. Here, um, so real quick, here's the salad. Here, one second. Get some red. There's the after holiday salad. Yum, ready to go. That looks so good. Refreshing. Just to, just to use it with a spoon and <clears throat> sit down in front of the TV or sit outside if it's nice and away you go. Okay. So the mushroom gravy, last thing. So we're going to heat a little, little bit of more vegetable broth. You know, I found in the regular grocery store a brand of boxed broth that wasn't too expensive that's naturally salt free. It's called Kitchen Basics. And that's what I use to make my gravy this year. Yeah, that's, I have seen that. That's really, that's um, really good. It's like a Trader Joe's. And I think I have a, a piece of the Brussels sprouts caught. Mm. Hey, everyone, I just want to let you know we do have another show today at 10 30. It's called small business Sunday, where we have some more black Friday specials for you of my favorite vegan products. So we can't continue with, you know, but you can come back in right away at 11, excuse me, 10 30 Pacific time. And if you're watching on Facebook, please join us on YouTube so you can participate in the chat. Perfect. I'm just sauteing up some onions and some garlic. So to get the gravy going, it's only going to take a couple minutes and then we're going to build this burger. The other, the other, um, so the bread, I'm going to get it toasted also. So we just use like Easy's. So it used to be Udi's, but now it's Easy's. And so they have a bread line that they do that's pretty much like three to five ingredients. And so this is one of their little bread lines and I'm just going to toast it up. So it'll be a nice size. Throw in. This is pure mushroom gravy. So if you don't like mushrooms or if you're looking for other gravies, I have all kinds of different other gravies that don't have mushrooms in them. But since this is more of the holiday burger that makes sense to have the mushrooms. Okay. 
grab the plate. So here's our fun little plate for the burger. I added some paper. Kind of holiday. Yeah. Been making a lot of the um the veggie wraps from uh from Melissa. <laughs> oh, aren't oh you got that book, aren't they great? And and those guys were I forgot the bundle's only two more days. And if you don't have Lissa's wrap book, click the bundle link because uh the book is like $33 and for 50 you get her bundle. Yeah, I don't have the the big, you know, 14 by 14. So I have one that's like 12, maybe it's like 11 by 12. So it's one of the smaller Excalibur. Um, cause I'd ordered the, you know, I didn't measure it. I just thought, oh yeah, I have the bigger one and I don't, but it still made them like, you know, a little bit longer and stuff and not as wide, not the square and stuff. The first time I made them not so good. Um, and she says that, you know, that first time you make them, they may not turn out. They, we got one that turned out the rest of them kind of cracked and got a little kind of rubbery, but then the second batch that I made and just, I really watched it and I added a little bit more of the psyllium husk and that type of thing, um, turned out great end up making the purple sweet potatoes in it. So they were kind of purple and stuff and it took them for a week. I actually, when I was, um, when I was up working, I was at the, at the, the go live and stuff. I took it and made them up for a week and ate them for an entire week and they held up. They were good. Okay. So I'm going to add the mushrooms. Mushrooms don't take very long, so just enough to saute them down. Check the burgers. Bread. Burgers are looking great. And we're going to add some flour to it because, of course, we're making and make it add a little bit of roux because you're making a gravy. That's a cool little cooktop you got. Love it. Yeah, it's actually they're, they're starting to it's called New Wave. And it used they they were um, I got it was three for three for ninety nine dollars when I bought them. And this is quite a while, probably 10 years ago, but they're now back on QVC. Not as inexpensive as that, but they're back. All right, so I'm going to add the flour, coat the mushrooms. Now I'm going to add the vegetable broth. Quick stir of it first. Then I'll add some more. Black pepper. And the last thing is low sodium soy sauce for just a little bit of flavor difference. If you don't like low sodium soy sauce, you can just leave it out and heat up. All right, burgers, bread. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Set these off to the side for a minute. My gravy to thicken up. So you could do the same gravy without the mushrooms. That would be another way that you could do it. Another quick, easy way to do a gravy is just taking like your low sodium um, vegetable broth put like your favorite spices, like a little bit of thyme, a little bit of maybe oregano or just like your poultry seasonings. And, and then a little bit of um, like tapioca starch, that type of thing. Once you have that in there and you just let it just kind of boil and just kind of keep stirring it, then you have a really fast, good tasting gravy. Well, for a minute. You 
guys are going to eat well today. Yes, Jerry will, won't he? Everyone wants to be Jerry. The luckiest man in the world. Gina wants to know about your cookbook. She says, I see quick start meal cookbook. How do we get the plant-based kitchen cookbook? So I've got, I've got older version of it. Um, so I need to, so I need to go through it and pull some recipes from it and then talk and then get it reprinted so that I can get that one out there. And then I can start doing the, the E cookbooks. Cause there's a lot, there's probably, I don't know, three, 400 recipes that are not in that cookbook. So let me check on getting that reprinted and get that. Cause there's a couple of little, like I found, you know, like when you're going through the cookbook and I found a couple of little mistakes and stuff. So I wanted to fix that. So I can do that. Then I can, then I'll send out and say everybody, Hey, it's ready. Gravy. Burger. Let's get the pretty one. Holds up well. That. The Brussels sprouts. Oh my God. You are just a, such an undiscovered culinary talent. Thank you. You're so creative. Your food's so good. You need a, a show, a restaurant, a food delivery service, something. Quit that damn job that's holding you back from your oh, life's passion. Job. I know. My lack of my lack of creativity, damn job. There we go. All right. Got all over my hands. If they heard you saying that, would you be in trouble? No. Oh, okay. No, I think, you know, because most of us that have been there and doing that, that job, and we've been doing it for probably 10, 15 years of, of Epic Go Lives and Electronic Medical Records, there's, they burnt a lot of people out, a lot. There's a lot of people that are just like, I can't do this anymore. So there's a lot of people would say, damn job. All right. So there is your after holiday burger. So you've got your, you've got your mushroom gravy. You have your, your burger that has green beans and, and sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes. So everything that pretty much that you have left over. Your Brussels sprout slaw has your cranberry sauce that's on there. So when you bite into it, you're going to get that layer of cranberry sauce. And I put just a little bit on top. And then get my hand out of there. Oops. After holiday salad. Same thing. You could use up your roasted vegetables if you wanted to. Still use the citrus dressing, add some butternut squash. But guess what? This is lunch. Lunch for Jerry. You have outdone yourself. I mean, I think it'd be worth it just to make the initial offerings, just to have the leftovers to make this recipe. Yes, I agree. Well, as luck would have it, you're coming back before Christmas. Your actual date is the 24th. So maybe you can do some Christmassy type stuff for us. I definitely will. That'll be fun. Love to do the Christmas things. Well, you're, you're, I just enjoy watching you so much. You. I mean, you're just so creative and I've had your food so I can attest it's delicious. <laughs> you know what? Let's do, let's do a husband swap for a while. Bring, okay. You know, like they have a TV show. Jerry, would you switch with Charles for just a week? Do the TV show? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if it could be a show, but it just might be fun. Yeah. Oh, Charles would love that. He said he could sue chef. He knows he's got like Jerry. Jerry's recipes. not going to get such fancy stuff at my house. He's going to get a lot of starch and a lot of, oh, he's going to get a lot more dessert though. Does he like dessert? Cause if he's here, he's yeah, he does. Him. He'll get a lot of dessert. I'll tell you that, but it's not going to be as fancy. The entrees. It's gonna be oh, a lot he would, if you get, if you fed him nothing but starches and then gave him some desserts in between, he'd be happy. All right, let's, let's do that. I think it'd be great. We can film it. Kelly, thank you so much. Happy You're welcome to you and Jerry. And I can't wait to see you back on the Christmas Eve day. Sounds great. Thank you, everybody. Love you, Chef AJ. Same here. And thanks to all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two minutes. I'll just reset the broadcast studio for some small business Sunday vegan.